Hi everyone, in this tutorial I just want to go over briefly um, how to create a currency ticker app and um, I also have this online at my website anthonyvipon.com slash currency and we'll just use the localhost version for this. Um, so basically I just want to go through this briefly and just show you how it works. Um, I use a plugin for it and um, if you wanted to create something similar you could you know, just use the ideas I have here and do your own implementation. So basically um, it has these doors, you open them up and um, all the prices are scrolling in there. If we hover over one of the prices um, we get the information there. If the if we hover over another one and the value has gone down those get displayed in red and we can go over another one and we see the green values there. So um, let's just go over briefly how this works. Um, I'm just going to right click here and we're going to inspect here in Chrome and we're going to go over to the console and you can see this object here so what I've done is um, if we go over to Yahoo's website here um, basically all of the uh, all of the stocks and all of their information are here in a JSON object and what we do is we request this and then um, all of this gets returned as an object and then inside this object has got um, a resources property which is an array of 164 elements and if we open that up we'll see um, all sorts of things in it each element um, oh sorry not that in this resource here uh, and then I click on fields and you see now we're getting into the individual stock so the name of the stock uh, the price the symbol and all this different data uh, which is getting displayed um, <clears throat> when we hover over one of these. So let's go over to the code and um, let's start off just with the HTML. So um, I think there's nothing special here. I'm using HTML5 boilerplate. That's what I'm starting off with. And we're including uh, jQuery and then we are including our plugins and then we have our main JavaScript file. Let's go over to the CSS and I don't think I want to talk about this. Let's see if there's anything interesting here. No, I don't think we have time for that. So let's skip over that and go over to, um, let's look at the plugin first because that's included first. And um, this starting stuff, this just comes with uh, HTML5 boilerplate. And if we go down here, this is the plugin I'm using. It's called uh, WebTicker 1.3 and I found it was pretty good. And um, <clears throat> basically what we do with this is we're just, there's an unordered list and we're going to populate that with our own list items. So um, let's go over to main.js here and start from the top. So everything's wrapped in the document.ready function. And um, I have one, uh, one function declared here which is uc words. And basically what this is going to do is it's just going to take, um, you know, a, something like currency and it's going to capitalize the first letter currency so it looks a bit better so we have that function to um, capitalize a word and if we go down here um, first we're doing some variable caching so we're getting this this web ticker div right here and this is um, a ul tag and we're going to put our list items inside that and we're storing that in this variable here so we can um, <clears throat> we can reference it in different places without calling on the DOM every time and wasting resources. So this variable caching is going to improve the speed of our JavaScript file. And after that, um, I actually have some kind of hacky stuff right here. Um, I was having a bit of trouble getting the data coming in, so there's this sort of um, hacky list items coming in first. Please hold while the currency prices are loaded in. So this app isn't totally finished. It's still, um, I'm still working on it. I'm not sure how far I'll take it but uh, that was just sort of a temporary solution. And then um, we have our uh, currency info div, just making a variable for that. And um, this function, we're, we're appending my, um, my initial list items. And then this web ticker dot web ticker, uh, this is what's, um, with, which is invoking the plugin. So we're getting all our, all our ticker functionality right here. <clears throat> okay. So after that, we're declaring um, a URL variable, and that is set to um, 
that JSON file I showed you. So if we go back to the browser and we go here, so we see um, all of you know Yahoo's uh, currency information here, and it's in uh, it's in well-formed JSON data. So if I right-click here to view the source, you'll see that this is all well-formed JSON data, and this doesn't work if this is not well-formed. So it must be well-formed uh, JSON. And <clears throat> so let's go to um, let's go to the code here. So what we're doing is we're just taking this URL, and that at the end of it we are appending on this ampersand callback and then equals question mark. Okay, and it won't work without this. So this is what makes it a JSON P request. So um, if we didn't have this, this would fail because it would be the same. It would fail due to the same origin policy. But this makes a JSON P request, and JSON means uh, it means JSON with padding, okay. And um, so we're declaring that variable right there, and then uh, this we can just ignore this info displayed for right now because that's I was trying to get it to work on iPad. So just ignore that for now. And down here we go to jQuery's uh, dot um, get JSON. Okay, which is basically this is a shorthand method for the dot ajax in jQuery, and we're passing that the URL. The second parameter is null, and then the third parameter is a callback function. And the callback function um, takes data um, as as its parameter. So um, and right here we're just console log data. So we can see you know that entire object that was returned. Let's just go back to it for a second. It's kind of interesting. So we open up the object and then we go to the list property and then resources property you see is an array of 164 different currencies. And if we open that up, um, yeah, this is, well, yeah, this resource is, um, it is an array of 164 elements. So here we can see all the different array elements here. And if we go in the first array element, it's an object and we open that up and then the resource property and then we start to get into the good stuff here under fields and then we can see all that information so that's where I got all that data from let's just close that so here we have a for loop um, and inside the for loop we had that data dot list dot resources which was an array so that array is going to have a length so we're doing a simple for loop here for i is set to zero, i is less than the length of that array, increment by one each time, and then um, this currency object is being set to um, data list resources and then i. Okay, so this is going to change each time. Resource dot fields. Okay, and then all of the stuff we wanted was inside that fields property. Okay, and then we're just checking. Um, the change if it's greater or equal to zero then it's green or else it's red that just gives us some nice green and red formatting and then what we're doing is we are appending on these list items and we're giving it an ID of the number okay and the reason for this is because um, the reason we need to do that is so that this div that's uh, being displayed in the middle so that's going to match up so the I that is being referenced right here is the same below where I have um, this ID right here. So basically those are both integers, they match up. So when I uh, when I hover over a stock, I get the information for that stock below. Okay. Um, so let's just see if uh, there's anything else to talk about here. Um, I think that's basically everything I wanted to talk about. Um, I don't want to go into detail about um, how JSONP works, but basically a JSONP is a way to um, circumvent the problems that you'll have with the same origin policy. So um, if we didn't add this right here, it wouldn't work. So and another thing that I want to mention is that JSONP won't work unless um, the server supports it. So if we just go over to um, if we go over to uh, this one right here, so basically, like from what I understand so far, um, you know, I don't know where's our uh, where's our question mark now, and we can go, we can see it in the code. So um, 
basically Yahoo is supporting this JSONP or else it wouldn't work. And um, this dollar sign is is basically like a jQuery variable, and this is going to get converted to something else. So actually, if we go to um, if we right click here, and we go to um, network, and let's just refresh the page so we get these coming in. And um, if we go down here, we'll see uh, this one, this quote right here. And if I click on this, uh, we can see the information of the request URL. So actually, the request URL wasn't a question mark. It was callback equals jQuery and then this long random string. OK, and that format is JSON. And we can see that we have a response right here. And the response is this, um, well, we have this uh, this function right here, okay? So um, it's basically getting uh, what what Yahoo is giving us back is they're giving us back all the JSON data um, wrapped inside this function, okay? And then jQuery is using this function, so it's immediately being invoked, okay? So that's how this is working, okay? I don't think I explained that very well, but basically with JSONP. Um, that all of that JSON data gets wrapped inside this uh, function invocation so then we can invoke it inside our script and we can and then what's what that's going to do is that jQuery is going to create that object for us and then we can use that object however we want